welcome to the live stream tonight. We've got a very kind of little spooky little uh, experiment going on in the game room. I've got it all set up with all different types of uh, root tables. We've got a few kind of different biomes set up with uh, some different locations as well. I'm gonna be talking about all the different types of fog techniques that I've been using over the past year for a lot of the miniature photography and uh, just did a little different tabletop setups that I'm using. Uh, a few things that I've got on the, uh, on the stream deck as well. Got it all kind of set here, pre-programmed with some stuff. And we've got a few of these little kind of biomes and stuff that we're gonna have a look at. If you're a Patreon supporter, I'm extremely thankful for your support. And a special shout out to Chris Andrus, Luke Mansberger, John A. Johnson, and Charisma On Command. Thanks so much, guys. Um, so without further ado, there's not much fog in this room at the moment. So let's get into it here. What we have here is we have a few of these pipe uh, modifiers that I have. So Patreons on the channel, they know I've been kind of working on this in the background. So these are all 3D modeled. Uh, and they're basically, you hook them into these kind of the PVC pipes and they work in through the fog and they kind of set up in a way to have more of a kind of practical kind of application for this smoke. Uh, and they have all these different kind of modifiers and fixtures on, on a few of these. We have some of these uh, little little chimneys and stuff. Actually, I'm gonna set this to the lighting mode that I had set up here. So this is using a water specified mist uh, as well. So um, it's gonna keep all that moisture off the terrain, but still gonna give you this kind of effect. By the time it kind of goes down and settles, it's not gonna make anything too wet. Any kind of moisture that's gonna pick up it's going to be inside these pipes, and that's fine. That's fine. We want to keep it. We want to keep the water in there, um, and it's usually hours before it becomes any kind of nuisance. So, uh, but these pipes are going to be. Uh, these are 3D modeled by me, and we're going to have uh, a few. Actually, we had a little bit of extra lighting effect here. There we go. Forgot about that one. Um, we're gonna have these 3D models available for Patreons, and there's gonna be a video coming out that's gonna show you how to set these up, use them, uh, 3D print them for yourself. Now the lights aren't just for uh, color, uh, but having them positioned behind the fog, you can see here, even here with the up light coming upwards, uh, it's, creating, it's giving more volume to the fog. So right now I've got it on a pretty low setting, but because of that light coming from behind and upwards, it's just giving more body to that fog. Uh, and you see, really, you can if, if this was lit from the front, you would see less of that fog. But because we've got lots of this light coming from the back, coming from underneath, it's giving a lot more body to that fog. And you can see I'm using also lots of, lots of complementary colors as well. We've got blues and oranges. This is for more of a deserty kind of uh, set up here. Uh, how I'm lighting this is we've got a few different lights as well. We've got some DMX lights on the ceiling. There is a uh, video on the channel that shows how to set those up as well. And then we've got a few like extra little RGB remote type lights to tint them. Uh, that is that one fill up the room like a normal smoke machine does. No. So uh, thanks for the question. Um, this one is very much a localized effect. Uh, so it's only gonna keep it around here. And this one's actually a lot better. I think we had a, uh, a Patreon supporter that had used the other folk smoke, uh, smoke machine and it was playing up with a lot of his asthma and stuff. So this one is water-based. It's, it's just water as well. Uh, and it's all gonna keep it localized here. So you could use this at uh, conventions and everything it's not going to set off like smoke alarms or anything like that um, but it does create a cool little effect here and with these pipes you can actually get because this is a little bit of a fan forced in here as well it's got a huge tank in it so this is a four liter tank I only have it filled up to a little bit at the bottom it has a little bit of a fan and that's blowing it up and out and that's quite similar to what we've got here on the side uh, which we'll see in a minute which is the uh, Fog Monster 2. So, uses water, pretty cheap. This is the second one I've gotten. Uh, the first one, unfortunately, I was a little bit careless with. Uh, I let some water get into the nethers uh, of the below and that shorted out. 
So try not to get any kind of like water and stuff on there. Uh, but if you keep it mostly contained, you keep it nice and clean, shouldn't do too much. Um, you, you fill up this tank with, it will last <laughs> hours. It is cool that you can have it turned off and then turn on, turn off. Just all with the, the stream deck as well because it relies on that power coming through. Turn it back on. There we go. Uh, let, let's see if we can can bump this up a bit. So this is on the what? What have we got? Mid, I think. So I'm going to put it up to max now. And you can see it depends on where you place a lot of these uh, pipes. You kind of kind of keep in mind where they're kind of positioned. You can see even at the end because that's where the the air flow is going to go. It's going to go back. It's going to diffuse up here and then to the front. Uh, but yeah, that's, <laughs> that is blasting out. Um, but yeah, I could, you can get some really good output on this one. So that one is a lot of fun. Yeah, now it's just on the minimal setting. So even just like a, a little bit of an effect, that would be, that'd look great. Uh, okay. Let's, let's move on to the next one. So this one, this is a little type of uh, setup that I have. This is for more of a... I've used, I've used this at uh, people's, people's houses and stuff when I'm going to be more on the road. It's basically a little cylindrical wall. And we have some forest terrain kind of setup. And the, the purpose of the wall is basically what a kind of mist is coming into it, that's going to kind of help lock it in, in this area. So it gives you about 22 inch, so it's almost two feet wide, I guess, yeah. But this small little play space, it's great for like small kind of like skirmish encounters. And so we've got, we've got this guy here ready to go. So hooked up to the back of this guy, Fog Monster 2. Uh, this one has a little inbuilt fan in the top and that fan helps push that fog out uh, a bit better. Um, and you can see on the front of it, rather than the little kind of, what is it, uh, four centimeter like hole on it, this one is the pipe that I saved from the other Reptile Frogger that died and it was a perfect fit and I actually quite like it a lot more because it lets me direct the fog a lot more. Otherwise you're gonna have to get like those PVC pipes and make some kind of big elaborate system. Um, all right, but, but what I've liked to do with this one is rather than have it just like full blast all the time, I'll just get it to a, a high output. And then I'll switch it to its puffer mode. So what the puffer mode does is it basically does it at intervals. So it's going to have that fog and then turn it on and off. And that's going to delay any kind of uh, condensation build up pretty well. You can see around the edge here. So this is one of these smart LED strips. It has a few kind of cool effects as well. So. For instance, this is going off script here, but you can change it to different types of lights and stuff. So this one in particular is a smart one where it has kind of lighting regions on it. But basically, you've got that strip and you can put little animations on it. For instance, this is pretty cool. So you can have little movements. I think this actually works really well. It would be cool to have this go all the way around. All right, so an alternative to this fog machine, this Fog Monster 2, if you're not familiar with this, this is one of these uh, little wand humidifiers that you can get off uh, Amazon. They're about 10 bucks. I put an affiliate link down below. Any purchases from those kind of help uh, support the channel. But what this is, is basically 
another version of water-induced fog, uh, but I've got it here set up on this tripod with a little bit one of these super clamps. Uh, these ones, now for the life of me, I can't find ones that are rechargeable anymore, but I've got these ones hooked up to a little kind of portable power pack, battery pack. Uh, so they're just set up on this little selfie stand. And what I like about setting them up like this is you aim them high, nice, at the top. This. When you turn that guy on, so coming from above like this means you're going to get very little to no condensation uh, down below. And what I like about this is it's almost simulating this kind of rain or snow type effect. You can see it's especially with the kind of raised area, it's still kind of catching some of that some of that fog, but it's creating this kind of like rain kind of feeling to it. I've used that quite a bit on the road as well. This one's really easy to set up. So that are probably of the, the three kind of water-based situations. This one is the cheapest. And oh, I guess like you guess you could think of the power bank as well. Still the cheapest. Still the cheapest. Uh, it's the cheapest and easiest to set up because you don't have to worry about pipes and stuff. Um, the trickiest part with this one is finding the bottle to fix it, fit it. Uh, what I'm using here for the bottle is one of those uh, old kind of like craft paint bottles. Uh, this one, you know, whereas I used to find ones that were like a perfect fit, this one was a bit too tight, but I heated it up a little bit with a uh, what do you call it? Uh, heat gun, just kind of soften it a bit and made it a nice snug fit. So it can go upside down, it's not going to let any water out, but still snug enough that you can kind of open it up, get in down. So that's a good, really good, cheap one to do. There is a video on the channel that has a little bit more of an in depth look at it. I think even at conventions and kind of like a brighter, like if I, if I switch this to like white kind of stage stage lighting here we go so even fully lit fully lit kind of environment you can still kind of see even with that little bit a little bit of fog is uh is, is what we're making it now i think also because i see people talking about the led strip here i think the key thing a lot of people when they have like their game tables and that kind of thing, they have it mounted quite high on the ledge, right? So, like, I see them have it mounted up here. And I think sp specifically for fog, <laughs> for fog effects, I think I'm quite liking it having it a lot lower around the edge, creating that, like, uplighting, underlighting. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'm liking that more. All right, let's have a look at this last table that I have over here. Uh, so this is a fog machine I've been using for a couple of years now. Uh, it is just one of those, those pipes. There is a video on the channel that shows you how to make one yourself. Um, but I've got a set of ice packs here. Now, actually, now I've discovered that there is a better way to stack the, these, uh, these ice packs into this one. So before on the video, on the channel, I would have them kind of stacked lengthways. And the idea was that the fog would come through, through here and kind of disperse through it. But I found that that wasn't really decelerating or slowing it down too much. Uh, so now I find that the best way is kind of grab these ice packs and just full on wall it up so we've got the fog coming through this pipe it's going to come out come right here now you want to cool down this fog as much as you can and you want to slow it down uh, because the slower it is the more resistance it has uh, it's going to kind of get heavier as well um, now I see a lot of people ask about like do oh, do I need special fog fluid for that kind of thing that's what we're going to find out right now. 
So, we've got the ice packs in there. Seal it away. So I like this type of container because it's got that kind of seal around the sides. It's gonna keep it nice and fresh. I've got a little bit of a timer kind of installed on this one as well. And I've fine-tuned it enough that usually it'll it'll get to a get to a point where the fog will start to disperse and then that'll kick in as well. So in this fog machine I have magic mist, which is a high density kind of like uh, fog fluid. And then this fog machine in the back, I have dollar store fog fluid that is nondescript, says fog fluid on it. Okay, here we go, here it comes. So this is with the high density fog fluid. So yes, okay, good question. Uh, Jacob asking about that timer. So that timer was actually not part of that fog machine. I bought it separately and uh, it was wired in a way that I had to kind of open up the fog machine and kind of reconnect things. I electrocuted myself only once, but once it was done, uh, it, it's been invaluable. Manually controlled and I was searching for a good solution for that. Um, yeah, you have to have a special port on the back, I think, um, because sometimes the cheaper fog machines will just have, uh, what do you call it? It'll just have the, um, actually, oh, I've got the cheap fog machine right here. Because this one, I can't put a remote in. Let's see. As you see on the back, there's no plugs to it. It just has it all kind of like hardwired in. Whereas the other one, see this one has the two plugs at the back. So one for the remote, one for the power. So if you have the two plugs, there are kind of remotes that you can get that plug into it. Now I found the timer has been a fantastic um, addition to it just because it's one less thing to manage and it's gonna keep the fog at a consistent level. If you can get it going, if you can find one, uh, definitely a good addition to the fog machine. You can see here, it's just kind of keeping it going, it's maintaining it, keeping it to a good level. Um, and there are a few th extra things going on this board as well. Uh, leave a comment down below about asking about the remote and I'll see if I can uh, find a proper link to it. Now, I, I don't know if I found it off like some obscure website or eBay or something. It was a while back. Um, but yeah, please leave a comment down below uh, asking about the remote, and I'll try and hook you up. Um, but yeah, there are a few things going on in this map to kind of create this kind of eerie little feeling. So, but one of the main things, uh, the addition to the, the fog, you can see we've got this pipe kind of coming up the back of it. That's, that's where it's coming from. And at the top, We've got a little, this is new, this is like a modifier basically. So this wasn't shown in the uh, fog video. I, I, I believe I showed like the essence of it, which was basically this cheesecloth, Halloween cloth. And it, it's basically, what it does, it decelerates that fog a lot more. And I've shaped it in a way that kind of angles it downwards as well. Um, so having that over the end of it is also gonna help slow down that fog because really you want to slow it down as much as you can just slowing it down more means means it's going to cool down more it's going to sit more um, uh, but yes there are a few things going on in this map besides that as well so we've got these led panels down here these ones are some nano leaf panels that are smart panels uh, and basically you can have little animations and lighting but the, the reason being for these guys is that under lighting is going to help add some extra extra boost to that fog so a lot of that incidental lighting like we've got like the little windows kind of lighting up even the moon kind of happening that's going to really especially when you have some fog in the room in the, in the room 
it's going to help uh, boost that fog as well. So all those kind of like under lights, anything that you can light from underneath or behind, that's going to boost it quite a bit. Let's have a look at the moon. That moon, I mean, I can take it apart for you as well. Uh, so you guys can see, see what it's like. Basically, uh, it was one of those cheap moon phase lights. It had like LEDs in it that kind of show you the different phases of the moons. Um, and those didn't work. So I took that out uh, and behind it, I'm going to take it off here. So we've got one of these little LED panel lights. So this is going to be much brighter, but I even have this set at 17%, so not even a fraction of that. It's just on a little stand here. And uh, on the back, I've just used some foam core. I'm going to seal that off and made a little mount for it to kind of sit. That's all just stuck together with hot glue. Turn that on. And so this, this surface is kind of translucent that's going to pick up and diffuse that light. So I had thoughts of how, how to make one from scratch, um, because I know these ones can be hard to find. Uh, all right, so one last little experiment here. Now, if you remember, I had a fog machine. This one, this fog machine was from a dollar store, $10. This fog fluid, $5. Uh, let's see how it looks in this fog chiller. So I'm gonna kind of change this out. And let's let's see how this one goes. Oh, so that is dollar store fog, fog machine and fog fluid. I think probably the only difference I'm seeing is there is a little bit more boil off, but not that much. So it really shows how important it is kind of cooling and decelerating that fog. Yeah, slowing it down. I, I, I've even run this fog machine with very, very, uh, with no ice even, no ice in there. And if you slow it down enough, if you give it enough time to decelerate, it'll, 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 it'll get heavier. Because when it comes out of that fog machine, it comes out real hot uh, and real fast. Ah, good question. Can fog machines damage your terrain? Um, now, there is a difference in here between the uh, fog uh, humidifier style fog machines and the, um, uh, the, the oil-based ones. Now, this is all using like water-based fluid, but I have noticed that with this type of fog machine, you do get a little bit of residue, uh, but usually if it's water-based, it's pretty easy to clean up. I haven't had, you know, like I varnish all of my stuff, uh, so I don't see it like damaging. Like I've used this terrain for years, like I've had it sitting in the garage, I've used lots of fog machines, fog setups, um, and it all still seems in pretty good nick. Uh, usually on like the terrain and miniatures, I haven't found it too bad. It kind of builds up a little, but usually kind of goes away. Uh, I guess, yeah, make sure, making sure that you use a water-based fluid kind of really helps. All right, last thing. Last thing I want to share with you guys because this one is going to fill the room. So this one in the back, this is, when I bought this, I had no idea it was going to be, <laughs> this, be this big. Basically what it is, it is a uh, fog machine that has a vent in the top here with some LEDs and you can have some interesting type of effects. Uh, so this, I, let, I saved this one for last because when I unleash it, it's gonna, fill, <laughs> it's gonna fill up the room because this is like industrial type style grade stuff. What I like about this one 
is what what drew me to it is that it was a uh, it's basically DMX controls. So you can see these leads in the bottom. They are actually hooked up to the computer as well. So you've got I've got a software on the computer that controls all the lights and the amount of fog that's going to come out of the top. Uh, I've, and we have had it for a couple of different types of effects. One of them being, uh, I had it in the middle of the table and I made a little hole in the table where you could have some of this light coming out of the top. We can have a little kind of like, almost like a fire effect. So that's just DMX controlled fog as well. Well, <laughs> but also uh, one of my favorite things, and I think the thing that I bought it for the most has been to do this kind of effect. I had a dragon coming in and they were gonna do like a uh, big kind of breath weapon, so. And I had this angled uh, a little bit more towards the players, so when it came out, it uh, enveloped them with the uh, fire kind of stuff. But see, even that's like pretty good, like behind the DM screen. It's kind of like wizards type of effects. <laughs> <laughs> Those are just a few kind of different fog style effects that I had prepared. Uh, there is, whoa, <laughs> there's a lot of fog in this room, uh, but hopefully you found it insightful. Thanks everybody for stopping by and checking out the stream. It's been fantastic having you here, showing all the different kind of fog effects. Uh, and hopefully you find some inspiration for your own table, for your own tabletop adventures. And until next time, I'm Sebastian and let's create and inspire.